topic that we'll take a look at is uh, starting to give you some meaning and interpretation for standard deviation. So remember, standard deviation is a measure of the typical amount any piece of data deviates from the mean. So let's begin by looking at these three graphs. In the first graph, we are told that this sample has a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 0. So why does that make sense? Well, keep in mind that standard deviation is a representation of how far the data is from the mean. In this very first graph, 5 is the mean, and notice every single piece of data is located here at 5. So there's no distance between the mean and each piece of data, resulting in a standard deviation of 0. In the next graph, the mean is still located at 5. And that's where most of the data is found. That's where the tallest bar is. But we do have pieces of data at 4 and 6 and 3 and 7. So our data has started to spread out. So we start at 0, where all the data is the same. We now have a standard deviation of 1.2. Compare that to the next graph. The mean of this data set is still 5. If you add up three twos, one three, one seven, and three eighths, you will get a mean of five. But notice there's no data located there. Instead, the data is on the furthest ends of this graph. So this represents a standard deviation of three. Our standard deviation numbers get higher as data is located further from the mean. So knowing that, we can estimate standard deviations based on the frequency distribution that we have. So this is example five in your book. Example one says we have a whole population that is eight pieces of data. And specifically, we can see that they're all the number four. So this is the data set represented by the graph. We're told that the mean is four, which it clearly is. What should the standard deviation be? Well, the standard deviation, and I'm going to use lowercase sigma for this because this is a population, should be exactly zero because each of the scores has no distance from the mean. They're identical. So this is like the first graph we saw up above. In the next graph, our data set is composed of threes and fives, and the threes, there are four of them, and the fives are also, there are four of them. So we're told that our mean is still going to be four. What's the standard deviation going to be this time? Well, think about how we calculated standard deviation. We started by finding the deviation of each piece of data from the mean, and then squaring it, dividing by the number of pieces of data, and then taking the square root. In this particular case, each piece of data is basically one unit away from the mean. You have some that are one unit below and would be represented by a negative one, and some that are one unit above, which would be represented by a positive one. So if all of your deviations are positive ones and negative ones, when you square them, add them up, and divide by how many there are, you're going to be still approximately at 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So our best guess is that this data set would have a standard deviation of 1. Notice it's a little bit higher than zero because the data has started to spread out from the mean, but it, they're still relatively close. Now in this last data set, this represents having two ones, two threes, two fives, and two sevens. So this would be our data set. The mean is still located at four. So the standard deviation for this data set should certainly be larger than one. It is more spread out than in the previous data set. And again, spread out from the mean, always from the mean. So if we think about it again, three and five are gonna have deviations of one. And then when you go from four to one and four to seven, you're gonna have deviations that start out at about three. 
So if you think, okay, deviations of one, deviations of three, a good approximation of the middle of that would put your standard deviation at around two. And in fact, you can calculate it since we have the data set. It does turn out that the standard deviation is 2.2, but two would be a perfectly reasonable estimate for this data set. So it's important to understand and have a picture in your mind about what standard deviation is telling you about the graph.